Okay, so picture this. A robot mom raising a baby gosling hmm. on an island full of talking animals. Sounds like a kid's book, right? It is. The Wild Robot. But from the reviews you sent us, it's got people of all ages feeling things. Some deep, deep feels. And those visuals, everyone's raving about the animation style. Seriously, listen to these descriptions. Ghibli-esque, like a moving painting even straight out of an indie video game. It's interesting how those comparisons all point away from that super realistic style we're used to in animation. You mean like photorealistic CGI? Yeah, yeah. like the wild robot is choosing to be more stylized, almost like a painting in motion. The one reviewer, what was it, the RMI TV one, and they described the shot of Roz learning to walk through the forest and the sunlight through the leaves. They said it looked like actual brush strokes. It's like the style itself adds to the emotion, right? Exactly. It's not about perfectly recreating reality. It's about using animation to enhance the emotional impact. Like, think about how certain color palettes can evoke very specific feelings. Which makes that comparison to flow even more interesting. Both of them, flow and the wild robot. They use this really stylized look to make us feel closer to nature. That connection with the natural world definitely comes through in both films. And they both deal with the ocean, too. One reviewer talks about the oceans rising in the wild robot, and another mentions those animals surviving the flood and flow. Seems like a common thread. Definitely tapping into something there. But let's shift gears for a sec. We gotta talk about the parent-child bond between Roz and Bright Bill. Lots of reviewers, let's just say, they weren't afraid to shed a tear or two. Tessa Smith, in her review, called it beautiful and touching. But we also saw another review that was a little more, I don't know, cynical maybe? But even they admitted, the film pulls at your heartstrings. So the question is, is it earned emotion or are they manipulating us? Yeah, is it all just cheap tricks? Right, and w what really struck me was how one reviewer pointed out how the film doesn't shy away from some tougher topics. I mean, yeah. we're talking death, adaptation, heavy stuff. Especially for a movie that's marketed as family friendly. Yeah, it's not afraid to go there. Not at all. It takes that classic idea you know, robot learning to love, and then adds this whole other layer of complexity. And with that all-star cast, I mean, come on. Lupita Nyong'o, Pedro Pascal, Catherine O'Hara, you can't go wrong. You had me at Lupita Nyong'o, to be honest. And speaking of her, one reviewer mentioned how her voice acting is just next level. Like, as Ryder becomes more human, her voice subtly shifts. Subtlety is key. Shows you how much a talented voice actor can do with just their voice, right? For sure. Well, we got to talk about Pedro Pascal for a sec, too. As Fink, the trickster fox, talk about perfect casting. One review said they basically co-parent Brightbill. That dynamic has got to be hilarious. Right, like imagine the parenting clashes. You've got Roz approaching it all logically like a robot would. Then you've got Fink, all instinct and chaos. And somehow they're raising a gosling together. Talk about a recipe for disaster. Or maybe a heartwarming comedy. Probably a bit of both, honestly. That push and pull between them, it's got to be what makes it so fun to watch. Speaking of fun to watch, we can't forget about those visuals. One review described this incredible scene Roz teaching Bright Bill to fly, and they animated it to feel like, you know, wind rushing through feathers. Oh, right. That detail really made an impression. It's like the animation style itself joins in on the storytelling. Right. Expressing things words just can't. And that level of artistry, that's where those Studio Ghibli comparisons come in. It's not just about how it looks, but how those visuals work within the story to bring out those feelings. But that actually brings up a counterpoint from one review. They felt the film relied a bit too much on those classic, familiar animation elements. Really? Interesting. They even mentioned Ghibli and the Iron Giant and even Flow. Like it felt a little too derivative, you know? Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Art's so subjective, what one person finds comforting, another might think is unoriginal. Like going to your favorite restaurant, ordering that dish you love, but it's just the standard version. Still good, but no wow factor. Did any reviewers give specific examples of where the wild robot fell short on originality? One mentioned the part where Roz meets all the animals for the first time. Said the designs, the interactions, felt a lot like similar scenes from other animated films. Huh. So not badly done, just mm -hmm. familiar. Right. Maybe a bit predictable for serious animation buffs. All about managing those expectations then. Okay, moving on. One thing that divided the reviews was the pacing. One mentioned an issue in the third act when that company that made Roz shows up. Ah, yes, I remember that. The reviewer thought it felt really abrupt, like a whole different storyline being crammed in. Said it messed with the flow and took away from the emotional core. Which is so weird because another review absolutely loved the ending. Called it perfect. 
and super emotionally powerful. See, this is why we do these deep dives. Everyone has a totally different experience, makes you think. So how do we square those two reactions? On the one hand, pacing issues, disjointed feeling. On the other, a super impactful ending. Maybe it comes down to how invested the viewer gets in the characters. If you're fully there with Roz and Bright Bill, those final scenes, even if rushed, will probably hit you right in the feels. But if you're more focused on the mechanics of the story, those hiccups will stand out more. Exactly. Some people, they forgive anything for a good emotional payoff. Others are more critical. Different priorities, I guess. Like some of us love a good plot twist, even if it's a bit out there while others want things to feel more, I don't know, believable. Right. So it's not about one review being right or wrong. It's about seeing the whole picture, you know, understanding where each person's coming from. It's all subjective, right? Yeah. What works for one person might not work for another. But, you know, one thing that some reviewers weren't so keen on, the dialogue. One review mentioned the motivational stuff felt kind of forced. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. They thought the inspirational quotes especially were a little too on the nose. Like it took away from the emotion instead of adding to it. Because it's like we're being told what to feel instead of feeling it naturally. Exactly. It's the classic show don't tell dilemma. A powerful line at just the right moment, super effective, but too much cheesy fortune cookie wisdom. It can fall flat, even in a heartwarming story. Less is more sometimes. But even with those little nitpicks, it sounds like most reviewers agree. The wild robot is visually stunning and it's got heart. For sure. The reviews used words like breathtaking, touching, even a new high bar for DreamWorks. That's high praise, even considering those few familiar elements. Right, which actually makes me think about that question you had at the end. One reviewer said this movie might be DreamWorks' finest hour. Could the wild robot, with its robot mom and her goose kid, actually become a classic. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We can't predict the future of film, but okay. we can look at what makes a classic a classic. It's that ability to connect with people on a universal level, right? To tell a story that breaks through time and trends. Timeless, yeah. And the wild robot with its themes of family and empathy and our relationship with nature, it's definitely tapping into some pretty timeless human experiences. Plus those visuals and that cast, Lupita Nyong'o and Pedro Pascal alone are enough to get people interested. For real. And we can't forget the emotional weight of it all, either. Lots of reviewers mention needing tissues, so fair warning, this isn't just a fun, fluffy animal movie. It's going to make you feel things. Maybe that's why it's resonating so strongly. But to sum up, we've got a movie that's visually stunning, emotionally powerful, and even the things some people didn't like. Well, others might actually enjoy those. That's the yeah. beauty of film, right? Absolutely. It's up to each person to decide. Do you think The Wild Robot has what it takes? We've given you the info. Now go see it and judge for yourself. <laughs>